Hey guys, this week's video is going to be a little bit different. It is a documentary style video shot mostly by my shop assistant, Aaron. It is me confronting my fears and anxieties and my design process for this Sam Maloof inspired rocking chair. This video, the finished final video, will be on the Rockler Woodworking Channel in about a week. And like I said, it's a little bit different for me. If you like this style video, let me know in the comments section. By the end of this video, the chair is only about about 75% done. The full completed video will be out this week on Rockler's channel. So enjoy the video and let me know what you think. Thank you. All right, what we're looking at here is just an old craftsman style oak frame that I got at the flea market for like $5. Needs restoration, but it's the only thing that I currently have in the shop that has arms and legs. So I'm using this as reference as a potential to copy the scale. I'm probably gonna, I'll take these measurements and exaggerate them a little bit. I'll dump the seat a little bit, extend the legs, and kind of slank it a little bit. But this gets me in the ballpark. That's what I'm thinking, but it's the kind of thing I probably wouldn't show on a YouTube video. I just immediately just start drawing it. But this is where I get my information from. What I'm really trying to measure is the height from the seat to the arms. I know from the seat to the ground is typically like 17 inches, so that's really what I'm going to go for. And uh, I'm going to start my sketch based on that, and then we'll see what happens. Now, would you ever think of just restoring this too? Or? Um, yeah, maybe, but not in, you know, I don't know. I keep these around for that exact purpose, but I never do it. Right. They ultimately become more inspiration than anything else. Okay, I laid out some key elements. The height of the chair is 17. From the back of the knees to the back of the butt is 20 inches. And now I've looked at some images online of the Sam Malib style chair. I don't read anything, I just look at images. So some people might critique this video that I didn't do this type of research or that type of research, but to me the most important thing is just looking at the images because that's what I have to do. I have to accomplish that image I'm not necessarily going to write a book report on it. So I got some of my basic lines here, and now I'm going to darken them. I'm just doing, yeah, this is going to basically be, because this whole thing is really freeform. Like the same style styles like a freeform chair. These are going to be the ribs that make up the, the legs. A little bit more. It's funny, even though like I know the drawing, I'm just still gesturing it. I guess it goes back to my pretty drawing, but I think to myself, milestones. I'm gonna make the legs and the seat. Those are the next muscles. So I'm only going to worry about the legs and the seat and then from that point that will establish what I need to do for the arms. So like road maps. Legs, seat, that's next. You, you can get bogged down by worrying about the whole thing at once and it just ends up screwing you time wise. A little bit at a time. We're going into what I call the junkyard. It's where we keep material. I bought a bunch of walnuts or something. Remember I bought a bunch more than I needed? The stools. Oh, these are for the stools, right. Here in the junkyard. So this is all walnut, and that's what I was going to use to make this. These are all walnut parts that I bought for the stools, I guess. I bought about a thousand dollars worth of walnut at the same time. And I made eight stools out of what we had. Did I make anything else but size of stools? Not that I know of. So to put it in context, yesterday, no, the day before yesterday we installed the gate, which I started building four days before that, five days before that. Right. The the Tuesday after Labor Day, I started the gate. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, on Labor Day, we were seeing, seeing the sides. Absolutely. <laughs> the day after Labor Day, we began the gate, installed the gate the following Saturday, which was two days ago. And then this morning, we did this, come look. At the end of the day, for the past two or three weeks, 
I've only had like a half a day off and you've had like no days off. And here, we did this this morning. Yesterday, we prepared all these plywoods for these shelves. These are gonna be 16 of the upright, what are they called? Displays. Bullet, bullet bourbon trailer displays. So they're kind of growing in here like weeds. And now I shall bandsaw my Sam Maloof rocker light. Aaron is my filmmaker today. And things that I don't think are important, Aaron thinks are important, he's gonna hit record. It's sometimes hard for me to realize what people need to see because I do this so often. Now, these are these are a lot of techniques you've adapted over the years from like your sign making experience and your art school experience and right. just things that seem the right way to do it to you as a person. Yep. Yep. It's a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, you know. I'm using a ballpoint pen on the carbon paper. Hold that down, keep everything somewhat in place. So I use a little bit of spray glue to keep things in place. The way you're working this is you consider this sort of a living document in that it's, like you said, it's a roadmap, not necessarily something that you're just going to be stuck to, but a thing that kind of gets you in the range of where you want to be. Yeah, it's not, this isn't like my sketch up. I, know, I don't, I don't necessarily have the ability, nor do I want the ability to make a sketch up and then have that be the, the, the document for all time. I like looking for opportunities where I could change, change things up a little bit. And I notice when people kind of do these established CGI drawings, and their whole goal is to make it look exactly like the drawing, and they're not necessarily looking for opportunities to improve that design because they believe they've done it all already. So I personally, like the idea of looking for opportunity to improve stuff while I work. Well, make changes that you know might become a design improvement to some extent. You know, that's basically the back and that's the leg. This is all going to be much thinner. When I cut the first one, that's going to establish the second one. Do you consider like most things that you make, especially the first one to be sort of continuous prototyping in that, you know, if you don't like it, you know, you can make one better later? Or? I personally think so, yeah. I always like that idea that I'm gonna go get the, this big roller. Again, I could have done this on the original drawing. So the thing that I'm noticing is that you, you start out fairly free form and loose, but as you get closer and closer to, to cutting, everything gets more and more precise. Mm -hmm. yep. I will edit out what we did the dead spot. Sure. You will assume I thought of this already. Because that's what any sane person would do. They would have thought of this already. Yeah, I think another thing that uh, people don't see from the YouTube videos is that they don't see all the different setups that you have to do in between doing your actual work. Or... Sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I imagine at the beginning trying to work and plan and build in your head while at the same time editing, you know, in camera and on the fly for the shots that you need. Yeah. Was difficult, but now I imagine it's more second nature or? 
Uh, it's always changing. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it is second nature, yeah. I just, you know, I just know I have to capture the scene. You know, I think of, like, all my experience. I think of uh, you know, the documentary uh, photography class I took, which always is get a good shot from above, and I just set the GoPro up here. And look, I grabbed it on the, uh, the on button for the... <laughs> whatever works. So that's rolling. This is rolling. And uh, just stay behind the camera. Yep. I might scale this back. This is a little, they don't really match as far as girth, but I do need a lot of stuff to actually carve, so. I do this all the time, looking for an edit point, so when you watch the movie, you'll see me go. I was already there, but it gives me something to edit to. I think I made my first mistake. I meant to have this flare on both sides. I completely forgot about it. Um, <coughs> I thought I was gonna add it to the drawing once I drew it on the wood, but. I don't have it, and now I just have to make it work. I can have the front of the legs just kind of kiss, and this these kind of fade in. Oh, look at that. That's a really good reference right there. Nice. So I need to develop a pocket, so... In reality, I'm going to sit here and fiddle around for a minute, and then eventually I'm going to make the joint. These have to be inside of that. Make this like this. Put the hand outside of his face a little bit. I'm not getting so super uptight about the uh, symmetry because I want the chair to have the feeling like it's kind of made out of clay. It will have symmetry because it's going to have two legs on either side. The seat has got some symmetry, but this scallop, that scallop, they're not exactly the same. But once I'm able to get these joints inside of each one of these things, I think I'll be, I'll be good. So, really, one way to figure out how to do it. You know what that means? What's up? Gotta do it. Gotta commit. Let's go. Uh. I think for a lot of uh, makers or people that are artists or want to get started on something, you're talking about something here that's, you know, a big chunk of material, a big chunk of wood, maybe a little bit of money for somebody. Uh -huh. What do you do to get yourself through that obstacle of, like, it's time to commit and you know that like, there's no going back once you start cutting? One word. Credit cards. 
I'm not kidding, because if you screw up, you got a month to pay it back. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you go on a payment plan, you pay it back. I developed my whole workup flow from credit cards. Just buying the things I don't have the money for, or buying materials I don't have the money for. Bridge financing. Right, here we are. This is a pretty good accomplishment for day two. I have a lot of shaping to do. This is way tall. I'm going to cut this down. So I kind of do this kind of whip de do here. So these joints are good. They're not great, but with epoxy in there and a screw, they'll never come apart. But the good thing is I can put a screw in them and then take them apart and bandsaw them and put them back together. This has to get kicked back, so I'll trim the back legs. And this could be a rocker. could be a regular chair. I'm happy with the... Uh, Progress. This is all gonna get done, so shaped. And uh, the back, I just cut the, 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 the headboard part, and it was the first taste of freeform band sawing, which is the whole reason I wanted to try this. Right. And it really felt good, and I can't wait to start chopping the rest of this thing into freeform shapes. Just sticking this arm through. I make, when there's complicated things to do twice, I make the complicated version first off camera, then I make it on camera. It's got to feel right, it's got to look right. It covers multiple different angles. So I got to think of what it's going to feel like with the peg through it. So once I mortise this into here, it's going to go down two inches. I got to just assume what that's going to feel like. And also, right now the rocker's about two inches higher than it's going to be because I haven't trimmed the back legs. So you see the, look at the feet. Mm -hmm. So I got the front raised up two inches, creating the angle and space. What do you think, Will? Nice. Like, like I say, you big guy. It's for a big guy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now see you've got sketch lines on the on the chair itself. What do those represent? This represents don't cut here because <laughs> I, I want to be able to blend that with some tools. And then uh, this means to thin it out. This thing's going to lose a lot of weight visually and physically. I, I overdid everything just because I've never done one, so I just want to give myself enough room to play with. So now some people faced with this situation would be inclined to just sort of maybe trash the whole project, stop doing it, give up on the whole idea. What keeps you from doing that? Because <laughs> I made a commitment to Rockler and myself to finish it. But, you know, going into this, I, I've never made a Sam Maloof rocking chair. I know there's going to be a million hurdles. You know, my one part of my brain says this is going to be so complicated you'll never finish it. The other part says... All you're doing is putting some pieces of wood together, so it's got to stay somewhere in the middle. All we're doing is just attaching things together. It's the quality of how things get attached together and the relationships between those attachments, the joinery. And if you're not good at that, how do you hide that? How do you, you know? Somebody once told me a professional is somebody that just is really good at hiding his mistakes. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm, I'm good at hiding my mistakes sometimes. I'll blend that in and that'll become the, the, the fitment for the, the inside joint on the uh, armrest. And I'll remember to not cut it off on the next one. Oh! Son of a bitch. So we can't say, did I do that? <laughs> Big. 
I use a DJI action camera. This has got the, the front screen on it. And it's just altogether better. I can hardly see the little screen, so I'm just like, if I could see my movement over there, I could see that my hand over here, over here. So then I know I'm good. Because I always speed everything up, it has to be on a tripod. So I hear people complaining that they wish they had a cameraman. This is my cameraman. His name is Tripod. <laughs> I'm honored to share that the first limited batch run of my new Makerware clothing line is almost sold out. Thank you very much. From the concept to the design to the actual production of the Makerware clothing, the response from this community has been overwhelming. With just a few pairs of my welder jeans and the chore coat left available in my shop. You can click in the link in the description below to see if there's still anything available. Thank you for all the love and support that you guys have given me on this journey. Thank you all very, very much. I just sculpted the legs, and like I said, I feel really comfortable doing this. This is like the funnest part. Getting to this part for me has been a little difficult. Doing this joinery and stuff is, for me, not a, not something I enjoy doing. I really, I really don't like doing joinery. As you know, much as some people on the internet make their whole lives about joinery, because I'm just not good at it. I'm never good at it. It's always complicated and pain in the ass for me. I do the best I can and it either doesn't fit and then I adjust it and it's too loose. Like that in-between thing, I could never hit it. But whatever. And then I'll have to, have to make these into one inch pegs perfectly. I'm still, I have a couple of ideas on how I'm gonna machine those perfectly round to come up through here. Right. Where did you pick up like your hand tool woodworking skills? Uh, just experimentation over the years, just experimenting. I learned a lot being on YouTube in the last nine years. I learned a lot from my fellow YouTubers. Tremendous amount. Watching people do things and then me going, oh, I can do that. Let me try that. And then, you know, watching more about YouTube and learning the right way to do it. Or the right way to learn how to do it, to be able to be creative with the process, whatever that process is. So have you, have you ever taken like a formal shop class, for lack of a better word? Uh, not really. I mean, not that I remember, just like high school shop, but I was like the accelerated student in high school. The teacher would always let me help do stuff. You know? This is coming together. Let me get some plants. That's you, Will. With just a bandsaw and a handsaw, you could make this. And it's just about skill. It's applying your skill and your vision to something. You don't have to know a lot of, you don't really need to know about joinery. You don't really need to know about, you just need to know I need a chair and I want it to look good. And this is how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. I was a little nervous that it was so boxy because I noticed a lot of his stuff is boxy like that. Mm -hmm. But by tapering and you know you kind of create the illusion that it's not boxy and you know boxy i i really wanted this to be more like like v-shaped like this back to be more v-shaped but i think it's perfect i'm really it's really grown on me i mean it's not perfect perfect but for me for my expectations it's perfect It's really coming together now. It'll be a little bit like Maloof, a little bit postmodern because stuff like here where I couldn't, I didn't really know and realize enough to leave that to blend it. I'll probably just leave it like that. I'll blend that in. And so it'll be a combination of Maloof style organics and just abrupt endings, but it doesn't bother me. Again, for going to school on this one, I'm really happy with it. How did we do this? <clears throat> I actually came up with an invention. You gotta watch the video. Uh. 
I did that on the bandsaw. No doubt. Use I, the use I the bandsaw it. as a lathe. I did. <laughs> I started it with the tenon cutter, which is like those old tree branch things, mm -hmm. and then I hand filed the top to like a barrel. Right. And then I took it to the wide bandsaw blade, and I just kept the barrel against the broad side of the blade, and just slowly turned it, and it just cut the cheeks of the tenon back. Just kept going and going and going and going and slowly. Just so, that's how I was able to, and then maintain the diameter of the one inch. Right. Because the blade kept leaning on it as it became apparent. Tomorrow I'll make the, the back of the chair and then the runners, the rockers. I probably won't be able to finish this tomorrow, Saturday, but if I had a completely uninterrupted Saturday, which is nearly impossible. Yeah, it's rare. <laughs> I would be able to do it. I always think of that guy in Twilight Zone who went inside the safe to read a book. And then there was a, a nuclear war. You remember that one? Yeah, Burgess Meredith. Yeah, yeah. And then there was a nuclear war and he comes out and there's nobody around and all he has is time to read. Yeah, and he breaks his glass. And... That's why I wish this was a vault. So when there's a nuclear war, I can come outside and everything would be my material. <laughs> I'm going to make things out of ash. <laughs> This is walnut from Ghent Supply in uh, upstate New York. Ghent, New York. Mm. Walnut. I bought a whole bunch of this for the stools, that the stool project that I did a few months ago. The stools that are in my kitchen right now. It's, it's made out of the same pile of walnut. This is, uh, I just did the backrest. I, I really kind of went full blown with sanding them just because I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to get at them again. But right now, the seat and the backrest is... Still, it's about 90% shaped, but I still have a lot to shape once I epoxy and nail all this stuff together. So this is all going to have to get incorporated into this somehow, some way. And then the headrest. You see that something funny happened here with the headrest. I kept coming up with these things, kind of fingering into it like this, and it forced the headrest to spin forward a little bit. I kind of like the gesture, so I'm just going to, I'm going to blend this. Right now it's just clamped, but... I will blend all this in in the final thing so I'm going to keep that gesture of these coming up and making this kind of point a little bit different than the than the, the devil horns here so these will point that way and the headrest is going to go that way I like the, the contrast of that slight gesture and it'll be fun to blend this all in together so I'm going to keep that this is the fitment and it's not even screwed together yet obviously it's got clamps on it but the fit up is is really really good there's a couple of open gaps here but that's just because i haven't really clamped and secured everything together go easy on the camera moves there tyrone big i'm just using a steady cam you carved that whole thing out of one piece of wood right i carved this whole thing out of one piece of wood yeah. this uh documentary style video is going to end right here uh tomorrow i will try and do the the rockers and this video will be done next week and hopefully up on the Rockler Woodworking Channel. But thanks for watching this video. It was a little different than my average video, but maybe there's something interesting in here that you guys would like. What? You don't even know what Sam Maloof is. You never even, never even watch one of his videos. <laughs> I don't either.